Today on The Physics Factor, I'll be chatting with my friends Jesse and Matt, who are fellow Cornell physics grads, and we'll be discussing a paper they recently released about the physics of moshing that's been getting quite a lot of attention. I'd just like to start off by uh, having you guys introduce yourselves. So my name is Jesse Silverberg. Uh, I'm a fourth year graduate student at Cornell, uh, and I am studying experimental soft matter physics. I'm Matt Bierbaum, and I'm a fourth year graduate student at Cornell, and I study condensed matter theory. My first question is actually, how did you guys get interested in physics in the first place? There was a point in my life where um, I realized that I was looking for something to keep me busy. And physics seemed like a good way to keep busy. I got in, um, into an undergrad program of physics and turned out I enjoyed it. It was lots of fun. It's been like the best freaking choice I ever made. What's my story? What is your story? Yeah, what is your story? What is my story? <laughs> so I took a very interesting class at my high school and um, since then, I've been tinkering with all sorts of things. So I think at age 17, I managed to shock myself with 15,000 volts through a slab of concrete. As a lifeguard, um, I created a cloud of hydrochloric acid, which encompassed a tree and killed it. And that's when you decided you should be a theorist. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you guys get interested in the physics of moshing? It's kind of an unusual topic when you consider physics and what that usually implies. So I've been going to metal shows for like 13 years. Normally I just jump in the mosh pit and have a great time. And you know, that's, that's what I do at a metal show. Like that's a lot of fun. About five years ago, uh, I took my girlfriend to her first heavy metal concert. She's there for her first time. I wanted her to have a good time and, you know, basically come back again. <laughs> so, so we stayed off on the side. From there, uh, I got to see what a mosh pit looks like for the first time. And I was somewhere in my undergrad physics uh, training, and looking at the people who were moshing, it was amazing. It was like, whoa! We studied that in class last week, <laughs> except it wasn't people. <laughs> um, and so, so uh, in watching the crowd, I got really distracted from the music and really distracted from what was going on and just really focused on what was happening there. And so uh, we left that show and there was a bunch of ideas floating in my head that just got put on a shelf and a back burner until I met Matt. So about three years after that, two years ago, we joined forces in Jim Sethna's staff at course. He's my advisor and a professor at Cornell as well. And what we did is we study it in terms of flocking. Like bird, flocks of birds? Is that what you mean? Yep. Um, murmurations of starlings, schools of fish, herds of wildebeest. How is this mosh pit system different from other systems that have been studied? So, there's been a lot of studies in how people move. There's been people who study how people form lanes as they move down opposite sides of the sidewalk. They've looked at traffic flows, so how you know a jam will back propagate as traffic builds up behind it. One of the famous examples is the wave. And even more than that, they've looked at how people escape. So they built models of how people exit buildings and how they exit stadiums to look at you know the escape rate versus geometry and other parameters. Okay, so useful if there's an emergency. It turns out there's actually businesses, companies who make their their living by taking these um, these models and taking this this science and applying it for large scale events. So for example. Uh, the Queen's Day uh, Parade in uh, uh, England. They take a map of the actual geographical location, they take all the science that Matt just mentioned, they put the two together and they try to identify where the potential problem spots are going to be and what they can do to mitigate any risks or danger to people at these events. So one of the first things that struck me when I read your paper was in your abstract and you wrote, we find these extreme social gatherings generate similarly extreme behaviors a disordered gas-like state called a mosh pit, and an ordered vortex-like state called a circle pit. And it made me think of how important definitions are in science, and actually reminded me of my high school physics right. class when we would discuss the conventional ideas of things like energy and work, and then what that means in physics. And I, I feel like it was kind of going backwards here, where we have mosh pits and circle pits in common speak, and you had to kind of bring it into physics lingo. And, I guess I'm just curious about the process of working through that. <laughs> I mean, something that's very important and actually is sort of a barrier to science in some sense is that we have this lingo that really has, that works to define things very precisely. Well, people call mosh pits everything. They call, you know, slam dancing and real mosh pits. They also call circle pits mosh pits. Okay. And so what we had to do is distinguish between what we, this very disordered state and this other ordered state because we think they're different phases, actually, of, of a similar, you know, one system. Mm -hmm. Once we had started, gotten to a point where we wanted to seriously start writing the story, 
uh, we were basically just really occupied by our day-to-day -day science that we're paid to do, right? Like this is a fun thing that we're doing on the side. So what we ended up doing was we went up um, and got tickets to take an overnight train from Syracuse to Chicago. <laughs> well, I'm taking credit for this. On a 12-hour ride, we basically wrote this paper and, and got to Chicago uh, and then got back on the train the next night and wrote it back to Syracuse <laughs> and did the editing on the 12-hour trip back. As we're going through this process, you know, we did come to this point where we have to figure out, like, look, we want to talk about Mach pits, we want to talk about circle pits. As Matt said, these are things we need to define. We are writing a scientific paper. This is a serious scientific paper. We need to speak to scientists in a scientific language. We need to use words carefully. Definitely. And most of our audience isn't going to know what a mosh pit is. Although, when Matt gave a talk to our department, a surprising number of the professors had been at heavy metal concerts in their lifetime. <laughs> In my opinion, science is probably one of the most metal things out there, <laughs> right? So, like, what does it mean to be metal, right? Basically, you, like, constantly fail. Like, that, that is... that's metal. You aren't the only authors on this paper. Your advisors' names are also on this paper. It is going through the formal peer review process. And I'm curious what your advisors thought when you proposed publishing this mosh pit paper. I would say that, actually, they were very supportive. That, um, even though it's unconventional, they encouraged us. And they said, yes, like, this is legitimate ways to spend your time. You are doing something that is valuable here. And uh, they basically uh, didn't put any barriers in front of us, and they helped coach us along the way on how to present this so that we are taken seriously. I think that if it was just Matt and I on our own, <laughs> So, um, we benefited a lot from their experience. So something else that was rather amusing about your paper uh, was that you gave a name to the particles in your oh, simulation. Yes. You called them Mobile Active Simulated Humanoids, or mashers. You have to take your victories when you get them. <laughs> one of the distinct pleasures of studying a new behavior and a new phenomena is that you get to develop the language. We don't have a language to describe mosh pits yet, so someone has to invent that language. There is a tradition in the field of flocking that uh, in the first studies of collective motion animals, they were focused on birds, and those simulations of birds were named boids. <laughs> hey, if someone has done it before us, <laughs> then we can do it too! Well, actually, it's sort of a yeah. throwback to yeah. uh, the origins of the word moshing. It started of, as mashing, oh, okay. so like, we're mashing about. And so, actually, this got mispronounced by a certain group, I won't name them. <laughs> Wikipedia will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so it got turned into moshing, and so we're actually taking it back to mashing again, gotcha. and throwing in this new Boyd-like interpretation. Another kind of technical question, you have a model for describing the mosh pit versus circle pit behavior, and in this model you're varying your flocking and your noise terms. And I was just curious if you could maybe explain to us a little bit more what flocking behavior is versus the noise and how that affects the motion, like what, what behaviors are getting increased or decreased when you vary those parameters. So the idea is that we want to be able to describe these people. So we create a simple model which we input the ingredients for how individuals move and from there we want to look at the collective behavior. And so we have four ingredients. First is repulsive force. People don't pass through each other like ghosts. Um, they also like to run around so we have the self-propulsion force. So it's not equilibrium, they're burning this energy and running around. And then we have this flocking one, which you mentioned. So this, this is the force where you look at all your neighbors, you look in which direction they're heading, and you head in that direction as well. And so this is, you know, the ingredient that's been used to describe Willoughby's and all these other systems. So what we think is that people are not acting entirely rationally at these shows. So they're sort of, con you know, confused by all the <laughs> noise and the lights and and sometimes they're drunk, <laughs> and so there's this noise term, and what that does is it makes it so you can't go directly in the direction that you want to. So we add this, um, essentially it's a random walk okay. on top of all the other forces. So maybe you want to go straight, but there's some people in your way, and you kind of end up veering off to so the Not even way. that. So that would be um, that would be if you had collisions. Okay. So this is even more so. You're, it's the drunkard's walk. Okay, okay. So you try and take a step forward, and you accidentally fall <laughs> to the right. <laughs> yeah. Got it. One other interesting result of this uh, paper is that Matt created a JavaScript simulation. Would you like to tell us about that a little bit? This is a simulation of the equations of motion that we use to recreate these mosh pits. And so, well, I want to share it with people. 
So one weekend I was like, oh, well, I'm going to learn JavaScript this weekend. And so what I did is I directly ported it over right onto the web. What's great here is that anyone can go there and visit the page and check out the model and play with it for themselves. So they can make mosh pits and circle pits and see what happens when you vary these parameters. And I posted the link below so you can check that out on your own as well. Now, a lot of people who have played with this have put, uh, posted comments in forums or message boards and almost uniformly it's like, oh my god, I just wasted half of my work day <laughs> playing with mosh pits. <laughs> and it's like, yes. Physicists yes, you take did. over the world. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and you mentioned that a lot of people have uh, been using it and posting it, and that's because you guys have gotten quite a bit of press about this project. I think we knew that we were working on a fun project that people would get a laugh out of. I don't think we ever anticipated the scope that this would go into. Maybe 60 or 70 news articles, about 10-ish uh, radio interviews. Very cool. Yeah. Japanese television. Japanese television. Nice. We actually got the clip and posted on YouTube, so now... <laughs> oh, you awesome! Watch. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to link that below as well. <laughs> we're up to our last question now, which is... What's next? Be because we have gotten some attention for it, I think that's an opportunity for us to, to leverage to try and do some interesting follow-up work. Uh, one of the issues that we had was getting good oh. videos. So yes. I think we're in a good position now that we can start approaching concert organizers, venues, band managers, bands, and say, look, we're not just trying to get free tickets to get backstage <laughs> of a concert. We are actually doing science, and mosh pits and circle pits are just the beginning of the rich variety of collective behaviors. And the dream is if we could actually say, like, you know, here's this model, and here's the predictions that we make based on these parameter values, you know, maybe we can actually try and see if it is going to, to tell us something about panic and riots and escape pan, uh, escape situations. Mm -hmm. So you may think that Jesse and Matt are pretty awesome for writing about the physics of mosh pits, but they also do some other fun outreach. Jesse has written a few blog posts for the Huffington Post, which I'm linking to below, and Matt is involved with a project with several other Cornell grad students called The Virtuosi. It's an online physics blog, and in particular he has another JavaScript project called Clicky that you should check out. Uh, would you like to tell us a little bit more about Clicky? The great thing is there's not much to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> what it is, it's a square grid with a dot, and you can move the dot, and there's a line that follows it. And anyone can look at this dot. Anywhere across the world, it's the same dot, and anyone can control it. So it doesn't sound that exciting, but it actually is. <laughs> you can have battles with people in Japan about moving this dot around. And you can talk to them. I see a lot of communication. People say hi and Very ask cool. questions. And... So you guys should definitely check that out as well. <laughs> Make sure to click yeah. on clicking. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Well, thank you so much, both of you. This has been a lot of fun. So Thanks thank for you. having us. Right. Yeah, it's been lots of fun, yeah. too. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can't see this because it's off camera. <laughs> <laughs>